I'm sure you've heard that in the career world, it's all about who you know. Today, I'll be helping you set yourself up for success in finding internships, opportunities, and mentors. And don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Before we get started, I'd like to tell you all a little bit about myself. I started doing research after moving back to the US from Argentina. In 2017, I was named a Broadcom Master with the Society for Science and the Public. Then, in 2023, I was named a Koch Scholar and Davidson Fellow in Science. I've also been involved with the National Center for Women and Information Technology, and I focused heavily in the natural sciences in high school. Today, I'm a Charles R. Westgate Scholar at Johns Hopkins University, where I'm working towards a degree in biomedical engineering. I began working in a laboratory at Florida International University, but my current work is at the Johns Hopkins Medical Institute. In 2023, I founded PARSE to help students achieve goals like getting into college and becoming involved with research, and you can learn more about me at my website. Let's start off with the first step in getting a mentor, meeting them. This typically entails interactions like cold emails, elevator pitches, and those coveted first impressions. A cold email is that first message you send to a stranger. It can be an email, phone call, or even LinkedIn DM. Typically by this point, you've already learned a bit about their background. Maybe you reviewed their Google Scholar portfolio, university biography, or LinkedIn page. When sending cold emails, your goal is to get in and get out. These people are often checking emails on their phones during bus rides or quick breaks, and you don't want to bombard their screen with a bajillion sentences they'll have to scroll through. So, how do you fit all those awesome things you have to say into a quick message? Here's a template from Parse. Let's break it down. You want to start the email off with a greeting. Typically, people use Dear Dr. So-and-so or Hello Ms. XYZ. I also really like starting emails off with Good Afternoon or Good Morning. Now, you want to take a bit to talk about yourself. Provide some background as to what your year in school is and what field of interest you're in. Then, bridge that to the rest of the email by talking about how you found the person you're reaching out to. For example, you can say something along the lines of, I found your laboratory through the Johns Hopkins Neuroscience website, or I recently attended this conference at which you presented work. This email is about opening a door for you to interact with this person, so it's crucial to describe the connection you already have to them. Now, you can further emphasize this connection by describing why you're interested in their work. You can start the next paragraph with something like, I have a strong interest in environmental science, and my current research project aligns strongly with your interest. Alternatively, you can talk about your future aspirations. For example, you could say, I hope to pursue a career in endocrinology and am inspired by your work with growth hormones. Next, attach something of yours to the email and acknowledge that file. If you want to work for this person, it may be a good idea to include your resume, since it will show what your past work has looked like and what you can bring to the table now. Alternatively, if you want to get involved with research for this person, it could be a good idea to attach a poster you have presented in the past. This will give them an idea of your current skill level and field of interest. Attaching papers can also be a good option, but keep in mind that papers are far more of a time commitment to read through than the other two options. Now, you could describe what you are hoping to get out of this interaction. Do you want to shadow them for a day, for a week? Do you want to intern for their company or pursue an apprenticeship under them? Do you want to work in their lab? And maybe you just want to interview them and hear their takes on a few questions you might have. Make this clear so they can also know what to expect from the interaction. Finally, close off by hinting towards the future. I always like to include the action item of a day or time to meet, even if it's general, like would you be free to meet this upcoming week? Also acknowledge that you hope to hear back from them by saying that you look forward to their response. Finally, close off the email with a respectful ending like sincerely or best. Now that we've talked through cold emails, let's visit the in-person equivalents of cold emails, elevator pitches. These are short spiels that introduce who you are and what your intentions are. Though you probably haven't given many elevator pitches in actual elevators, interviewers may have asked you for an elevator pitch already by giving you the option to introduce yourself by telling you to tell them about yourself. So you're getting stared down by the CEO of a, of a business you want to work for. 
You have under two minutes to get him to like you. What do you do? You briefly and respectfully show off. Tell these people your story in the context of the future. Now, what do I mean by that? Brief introductions are all about showing the ways that what you have done will help you achieve your next goal. For example, let's take a look at the intro I gave you at the beginning of this video. My main goal is to pursue science, so I based nearly all of my examples and details on that goal. Science, when I first started doing science fair projects and working in labs, I showed some of the highlights of my science journey thus far, especially in the context of awards, and I talked about what I currently do, from my own ongoing research to parse. When you think through your elevator pitches, also add your future endeavors. For example, I want to pursue a degree in physics, then become a high school science teacher. This shows that you're thinking about your future and that it is and that your future is that and that your future is related to your past. Regardless of when you're meeting someone new, you always want to put your best foot forward. As great as what you say might be, the first impression will only go well if your body language also shows interest. One of the biggest ways to show interest is by making eye contact. A little trick my friends and I have come up with is that if, you, if eye contact is intimidating to you, you can look at the space between their eyes or at their forehead. Also show your interest by practicing active listening. Nod and give verbal cues like mm-hmm as they speak. And ask questions related to what they're talking about. While you're with this person, engage with them in their work. Do your best to get a good understanding of what it is they do. This often also involves asking relevant questions, bringing up examples to what they talk about, and avoiding distractions like your phone. That all being said though, consider your context. Don't, in don't interrupt them when they speak. Additionally, if there is a line of people waiting to also talk to them, be mindful of everyone's time and don't take too much of it. Finally, make sure that your questions stay professional and relevant. Now that we've absolutely nailed our first impressions, let's talk through how to make the most of the connections we've established. One of my favorite pieces of advice is that you should surround yourself with the people that you look up to. Maybe you have a friend who is super enthusiastic about the work that they do, a teacher who has had a really cool career path, or a classmate who likes tutoring others. These people have amazing qualities that you can learn from, so surround yourself with them. It's a good thing to look up to the people you spend time with. Parents are also great, great role models. Ask them for life advice or support when you need it. Now that you know how to write a cold email, send one to a professor at your local university or a member of your community who does inspiring work. While you find role models, also consider yourself to be one. Strive for self-improvement in the areas that you want to get into. Seek to become a better researcher, a better student, and a better member of society as a whole. To do this, engage in learning opportunities, broaden your perspectives with those who are unlike you, and set clear goals. You should also invest time in your network. When you meet someone and cool, you should also invest time in your network. When you meet someone cool, don't just let that connection fizzle out. Stay in touch with them. With technology nowadays, this can be something simple like a social media connection or something more involved like a bi-monthly catch-up call. As with most things though, None of this will be doable unless you're genuine about it. Build your own reputation by being the best version of yourself. Not because you have to, no one's forcing you, but because you can and you want to. Also, set time aside for those you care about. Don't get caught up and starstruck by work relationships. Remember to prioritize your friends and family. Be, be there for them when they need support and seek them out when you have challenges. Now that we've spent time talking about relationships, Let's talk through some of the professional experiences positive relationships can open doors to. What professional experiences can you seek out? Interviews are a great way to quickly become acquainted with ask to meet over the phone or to get a cup of coffee with someone you look up to. This gives you a chance to ask them questions and seek out their advice. Interviews typically last between half an hour and an hour. Apprenticeships, internships, and observerships are all opportunities to actually engage with someone's work. Apprenticeships and internships tend to be hands-on, where you're physically working towards a project or a work goal. Alternatively, observerships typically exist for positions like medicine, where you need a certification to do hands-on work. These all involve larger time commitments, usually weeks or months worth of time. 
However, there are some of the best ways to become acquainted with the career field. Volunteer experiences are opportunities in which you donate your time towards a cause in exchange for learning more about it. These can be more attainable than paid internships because the company or lab doesn't have to sacrifice as many monetary resources to involve you in their work. Volunteer experiences can be formal programs or informal opportunities, and there are some amazing ways to get involved in a community. Programs are formal experiences, usually tailored towards helping you gain some kind of knowledge. They typically involve formal applications and are only open to those accepted into said program. Some programs are free, some require you to pay a fee, and some even compensate you for your time. It all depends on where you look. The internet is a great cool. The internet is a great tool for finding opportunities. Check websites that offer application advice for students. They often have lists of programs and companies that accept students. The same goes for many colleges and high schools. They often have programs for high schoolers to gain exposure to different career realms. You can also look for lists of labs or professors to cold email using the internet. Finally, leverage your connections to find these opportunities. Talk to your parents and their friends, to any college students you may know, and to your school's counseling department. They may know of opportunities you haven't even thought of. When applying to programs or even cold emailing, it's typically a good idea to include your resume. Resumes are usually one page long. They include an introduction with your name, information, and goal, your educational experience, and other categories like awards, work experience, and skills. If you talk about work or volunteer experience, it's usually a good idea to also include descriptions of, work, of what work you did or how you engaged with the company you interned at. Interviews. <laughs> Interviews are like sanity checks for potential employers to meet you and see if your personality matches with theirs. The best advice I can give you is to be yourself during the interview. Don't try to change for an employer. While you're in the interview, you can also put your best foot forward by showing interested body language and telling your story as described earlier in this video. Let's say you got the opportunity you've wanted. First of all, congratulations on this achievement. While you're engaged with a lab or company, ask questions to your coworkers and role models. Take initiative, offer to help wherever you can, and picture yourself in the role long-term. Is this something you would like to do more of? That covers everything for module 1D. It's been great talking to you.